Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Gordon Court. I'm uh, formerly the past president of the, or past president of the Get to Know Society. And I'm very happy to welcome to the call our special guests for the uh, uh, for this, this afternoon, Robert and Birgit Bateman. They're calling in from Salt Spring Island, BC. And as you know, uh, Bob was the inspiration, patron, and main spokesman for the Get to Know program uh, over the life of, uh, of, the, uh, of the program. And I'm sure he's looking forward to getting to uh, hear from to hear from some of the uh, former participants uh, in Get to Know, and uh, they've uh, they've been quite a number of years for some of them since they uh, they met Bob at uh, many of the unconferences and and uh, and other uh, events that we had with Get to Know, and uh, it uh, you know, it should be really 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 something to see him, and I'm sure he's looking forward to it. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to the creator and primary driver of the Get to Know. Uh, get to know program, which is uh, who is Mary Clark uh, calling in from uh, Kelowna, BC. Uh, welcome, Mary. And uh, really, before we get into the main program, I should give some historical context to the Get to Know program uh, that, that really began in the 1990s with, again, Mary's energy and imagination uh, regarding uh, conservation and endangered species in general. Uh, and she, she saw that. Uh, uh, the most iconic endangered species that uh, was extirpated from the interior of BC certainly was the peregrine falcon and it, uh, Mary, Mary realized this and she wanted to design a program where young captive bred peregrines were going to be reintroduced to the, o the Okanagan Valley uh, right in Kelowna and, uh, and, and in, in keeping with, uh, with doing more than just reintroducing peregrines, she wanted to design a program for youth, uh, K to 12, actually in schools, uh, endangered species uh, units and uh, celebrations of uh, what we were doing and what we could do uh, for species at risk uh, throughout Canada. So uh, that's really was uh, was a, a great deal of imagination that she had uh, there to to get some of the uh, businesses in Kelowna to sponsor some of the falcons and to uh, falcon uh, put there to uh, sponsor. Uh, uh, the purchase of these falcons and to actually uh, get a, a, a an organized pack release of, of young peregrines right within uh, Kelowna on Landmark Square building and also on Dilworth Cliff uh, close by uh, to the main part of Kelowna as well. Uh, this, this was really a successful program and uh, it uh, uh, Bob was the patron of the program and I was the, sort of the science guy and there was a whole bunch of other people involved in, uh, in, this, in this work. And uh, we, we did several years of releases within within Kelowna. And, and then uh, with that, during the many times during the uh, bring back the Peregrine program, uh, Robert Bateman was to address uh, the the youth and and the participants often. And he was often asked, "What would you do to further conservation values?" in youth today or in, in the population in general. And Bob's answer was always simple. And that was to appreciate, uh, do you have to get to know? And he said, all I would like to, do, would like to see is uh, young people to get to know the names of perhaps 10 species of, of animals and 10 species of plants in their neighborhoods. And in the knowing their names, you would begin to appreciate them and you get, begin to uh, uh, care for them and you would certainly support their conservation. So that is the, uh, that's really what grabbed Mary's attention. And certainly she, it was the real inspiration for Get to Know. And that's how Mary sort of morphed the, bring back the Peregrine program into the Get to Know program. And that's what we're here to, uh, to celebrate today. So it, it should be fun and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, before I go any further, I should say that um, if you would like to send questions uh, to Robert Bateman for possibly we can get some of them addressed later on, uh, you could please send these to Mary Clark via the chat function in Zoom. So if you can do that, Mary will go through them and, and relay them to, to, to us and to Bob later. So that's, uh, that's where we sit right now. And what I'd like to do is to call on Maxine DeHart, from, uh, City Councilor from Kelowna, to say a few words uh, on behalf of the city regarding uh, perhaps both the Get to Know program and the Bring Back the program. So Maxine, thank, take our Thank way. you, Gord. Thank you. Can everyone hear me there? I know I'm not on the screen, but there'll be some uh, lovely pictures coming up. So thank you, Gord. Uh, first of all, uh, I know we have, I have about three minutes here, so I'll get going. I wanted to say a big happy birthday to Mary. If none of you knew, it's her birthday today. 
And uh, I did have her in the column, and I guess her phone's going to ring off the hook. So really, um, happy birthday, Mary. Um, also, to start off, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Mary. We've been friends for many years, and when she approached me, I don't know how many years ago, to uh, actually get involved with the Peregrine Falcon project, uh, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't even know anything about it. But, you know, as relentless as Mary is, um, I, I joined her. And it has just been a thrill to be involved with that, to meet Mr. Bateman. It's been actually a dream. So, Mary, I just wanted to give you a huge thanks from someone who, yeah, you were relentless, but it's been uh, just a pleasure uh, to be involved with you. So on behalf of the city of Kelowna, Kelowna I really wanted to say how much we, uh, city of Kelowna, council, the mayor, appreciate uh, Robert Bateman and his many, many contributions over the years to our great city. Um, you will see pictures of uh, former Mayor Sharon Shepherd and Walter Gray. I know I spoke to them. They both enjoyed working with you so much, and we were so happy to have them share in with all the successes of Mr. Bateman. Um, the return of the Peregrine Falcon, the Wild Festival for Youth. I loved that when we used to go down to Okanagan College. Actually, that was my favorite. And the Bateman Art Contest, of course, uh, greatly improved the environmental awareness and the appreciation of our youth. And um, it, it was just, they were all just awesome, awesome events. Uh, together, we had like tons of fun and really got to know our wild neighbors. So thanks so much for all you did coming here so many times to Kelowna impressing on our kids that not only this of the species, the species that inhabiting the earth, but just everything that we that you, you taught us. Uh, we need to share the planet and remember our neighbors of all species. So one last thing um, for my time, and I don't know if Mr. Bateman would remember this, but Mary and I talk about it often because I bring it up, that I was invited to an event in Vancouver and I did fly down and it was downtown and I took a cab from the airport and I was talking to Mary and I said, I'll be there in a few minutes. Anyway, I got out of the cab and left my beautiful, beautiful Bateman book in the cab. And the cab took off and I was going to get it signed and I carried that all the way from Kelowna. Well, I phoned Mary and I honestly, I was crying and I told her what happened. We tried to phone the cab company, nothing was working. I, I was so, so upset, you guys. And anyway, lo and behold, I got another book from Mr. Bateman and he signed it and I treasure that book. But the good thing is somebody else got a Bateman book in the cab, the next guy that was in the cab. So anyway, just my little stories. Thank you for all you've done for Kelowna uh, as city councillor of over 10 years. Really appreciate it. And thanks to all of you today. Thanks. Thanks, thanks very much, Maxine. So, um, uh, as you know, uh, the Get to Know program, and that's uh, mentioned uh, earlier that there was very often um, uh, prize winners of the Bateman Art Contest, and there are also a selection of yes, Get to Know Ambassadors as well for the Get to Know program. And uh, this was you know, probably going on 10 or 15 years ago that some of these, uh, some of these young people were, were competing in those events and, and speaking at the conferences and, and actually um, uh, performing at, at some of the unconferences and I'm very happy to uh, introduce a selection of them to you now um, uh, and starting off will be uh, young or not so young anymore I guess Cameron Al Al Applin uh, of Ontario and uh, I think Cameron you go ahead and start the uh, start the group off if you will. Awesome uh, thank you Hello, everybody um, I just got a quick nod everybody can hear me yes no? perfect um, so hello everyone Mr. and Mrs. Bateman um, my name is Cameron Applin and I'm just uh, an interesting fact, one of over 50,000 individuals who have had the pleasure of participating in the Get to Know program uh, over the past 22 years that it's been running. Um, so I get the pleasure today of introducing and leading a group, uh, just a small group of individuals who participated in the Get to Know program uh, and who in the years since have really flourished in their, their careers all respectively. Uh, as for myself, when, when asked to speak for a few moments about the impact uh, that the Get to Know program has had on my life, uh, it took many moments of reflection, uh, and I, I thought the best way to do that would be just to kind of share a, a snapshot or timeline of uh, the, the opportunities I've gotten in my life because of the Get to Know program. 
Um, so starting in 2008, it was when I first met Mr. Bateman uh, with my wonderful long hair uh, in uh, an art gallery in Milton. Uh, the following year, 2009, I was selected as a photography winner into the program, and, and that really acted as a catalyst for me um, into photography. Uh, I was fortunate to be displayed in, in multiple art galleries in, in Ottawa for Canada's 150th birthday, uh, and even in Canadian Geographic, which was, which was really cool. Um, photography, me, photography for me was really a, a gateway to the outdoors. In 2012, I got to represent Canada at the Disney Kids in Nature celebration. Uh, and then in the same year, I asked for that, uh, as, as well as uh, got to go down to the Antarctic on an expedition to uh, learn about and study our polar regions. Um, can we go to the next slide there? In 2013, I got to co-lead my own art in the park program uh, as a youth here in Ontario with another get to know alumni, Kayla Jackson. Um, we got to kind of teach kids about the outdoors and share our passion. Uh, and then I went on to a pretty incredible uh, five year career with the Ontario parks. Uh, I was head of natural heritage education, learned to fish, learned to camp uh, and a park warden there. Cumulatively, I figure we, we outreached to about 10,000 people. Um, that were a lot of whom new Canadians are just learning the outdoors for the first time. Uh, it, it really was the all of the different conferences and events that I got to go to that gave me sort of unparalleled skills and opportunities that I still use to this day. Um, currently, I'm a fire prevention officer with the Town of Oakville Fire Department, but in my personal time, uh, I'm typically outdoors talking my friends ears off uh, and giving them unsolicited uh, nature facts that quite frankly, nobody's asked for. Um, but I do it uh, with, with no shame. Uh, if there's one thing that I would like for you to take away, Mr. Bateman, uh, for, from today, uh, it would be the gratitude that I feel for the opportunities and the friendships that I have been given in my life. Uh, and I, I believe that those are directly related to my involvement get to know program. Uh, so for that, I give you my sincere thanks. And it's now my pleasure to introduce Francis, another get to know alumni. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Francis and I started with uh, get to know at the 2014 unconference in Kelowna and I subsequently went to the 2015 one as well. Um, and I guess for me, the, the biggest thing that Get to Know did for me is it combined two of my biggest passions. I was always kind of conflicted between um, my one passion for art and design um, and my other passion for environment and nature. And when choosing uh, an educational path as well as a career, I always felt like I had to choose between the two of those things. Um, and Get to Know for me was the first time that I could combine those two things and really, uh, you know, express both of my passions as well as meet other like-minded youth that had the same passions as me um, for art and for the environment. Um, so this is a dress that I created for the 2014 Unconference, um, and it is meant to represent the ocean, um, the impact we are having on it, as well as um, how the ocean will come back to affect us if we don't treat it properly. So that last picture is, you know, me tangled in a net um, affected by the ocean because we're not taking care of it. So it's really about that. So it was a great opportunity for me to learn about the issues uh, related to our ocean, as well as kind of express those in a statement art piece with this dress. Um, so since being with Get to Know, um, I've kind of followed my passion for the environment. I studied environmental science and I now work for the city of North Vancouver as an environmental technician, um, where I deal with a variety of different environmental issues, including uh, invasive species management, stormwater management, uh, spill response and other environmental things. Um, and I'm still kind of missing that art and design piece. And I'm really excited to share that I am now um, going to pursue a master's in landscape architecture where I will be combining my two passions again for design and for the environment and for our parks. I will now pass it on to uh, Katie who will tell you a bit more about her experience. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Fitzgerald. I'm based out of Edmonton, Alberta. Um, I participated in the Kelowna and Calgary Get to Know Conference. Um, I've always loved photography and videography, and the Get to Know program provided me the opportunity to not only showcase my work at a young age, but also provided me the opportunity to meet so many like-minded youth, which was just so amazing. Um, whether it, it is seeing the beauty in afternoon walk or going around my neighborhood or witnessing the incredible views of the landscapes in Canmore, Alberta to this day, I bring my camera everywhere I go in hopes to capture those amazing moments. Uh, and then after the Get to Know program, um, I completed my Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award, which a large part of the requirements was to go on an outdoor expedition and learn a ton of new skills, which for me was centered around uh, photography and artwork and uh, connecting with nature. Um, I also volunteered with uh, creating a youth arts festival in my local city, uh, and I became actively involved in the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is very close to my heart. Um, as well as I graduated from the University of Alberta with my Bachelor of Commerce degree. Uh, now I work for a company called Jobber on their marketing team. Uh, pretty much my love for creativity when I was young really turned into my love for marketing and branding now. Um, and yeah, thank you for, for listening to my part today. And I will next hand it over to Colin. Hi, everyone. And hi, Mr. and Mrs. Bateman. So the Get to Know program serves until today. And one of the most important pieces I feel you gave to me very on Mr. Bateman was when you told me to always paint what's in my heart, no matter what anyone else says, because that is where the real art will come from. So I took that very seriously. And when I turned 19 years old, I discovered what is in my heart. And that's my obsessive passion for the Canadian grasslands region and all of its amazing and unique wildlife. At that time, I made a personal commitment to myself that I would do my very best to spend the better part of my life experiencing and portraying this uh, region in my artwork and sharing it with the world wherever, whenever I can. This has now turned into an ongoing series of artwork that I call the Grassland Series. I've been developing it now for 12 years and counting, and I certainly hope I have at least 12 more decades left to experience and portray this region in my artwork, as I feel like there's so much to learn and I feel like I'm still just getting started. And my goals with my artwork now are to, of course, I want to raise the awareness of this extremely fragile ecosystem that we have here within Canada, but on a much more grander scale, I am hoping that over time and through exhibitions of my work, I can connect with and inspire people of all ages from all over the world really to discover what their unique abilities are in life and their passions and to put them together to make a very positive difference in the natural world around them in a way that's very unique. I feel I'm starting to slowly make headway in doing this as I have been exhibiting my work in recent years. The largest exhibition to date took place when the Grassland series made its debut as a feature exhibit at the Royal Alberta Museum as a solo show. And the most recent exhibit took place just this past fall and winter in Lethbridge, Alberta. And the ball continues to roll and I continue to paint. And all of this started with my involvement from Get to Know. So I want to say that I'm extremely grateful for this program and for all of my involvement in this program as it is not only given me multiple friendships that I know will last until the end of my days, but has also provided me with numerous opportunities for growth and professional development as an artist, which I am truly thankful for. So I wanted to thank you, Mr. Bateman, for not only everything you've done for the planet, but for everything you've done for the Get to Know program as well. And just as an end note, um, I hope this isn't, but if this is the last time I get to speak with you, Mr. Bateman, I want you to know it has been an extreme privilege and honor for me in my own life to have met you and to have crossed paths with you so many times, especially when I was a very, very young man, as you have influenced and inspired me greatly, and it has brought out some of the very best inside of myself, especially artistically. Thank you, Mr. Bateman, and I will now pass it on to Quinn Delgarno. All right. My goodness, Robert Bateman. I think it's fair to say that you and I have a bit of a history together. 
Oh my goodness. From connecting at various art presentations in Ontario to connect to connecting and attending the Get to Know Unconference in Jasper. So that time you called my house and asked if you could showcase that mini doc I did in high school about nature deficit disorder. Oh my goodness. Um, it's crazy. Two big things happened to me when Get to Know entered my life. Firstly, I was able to network with a group of people I didn't even know existed, fellow art and nature enthusiasts. This changed my life socially, and I feel I have you to thank for that. Um, the second thing that happened to me is when I decided to um, head out west for the Get to Know trips. And in order to do that, um, I had to raise some money to pay for the trips. And um, I actually had and hosted my own photo shows and raised the money to do that. This showed me what was possible through my photography. And this also inevitably inspired me to pursue a career in media. I actually went on to study the art of film production at Sheridan College. Um, and I'm currently running my own business as a multimedia freelancer specializing in photography and uh, videography services out of Toronto. Um, I've become a passionate music enthusiast lately. I can play a few instruments now. So these days I find myself trying to combine everything at once and sometimes that's challenging. As I do that, I'm always brought back to nature. It is where I started. My roots are here as they are for you as well. Uh, my old haunts in the GTA are still as present in my life now as they were then, probably even more so now because uh, I can drive. Um, but I think about you a lot in these places and I miss you and I send love. And I think it's incredible that uh, the team here was able to pull this together and we were able to see each other even virtually once again. Um, I wish you the very best. You've had such a huge impact on me, uh, my family, my friends, my life friends, and that just means the world to me. And uh, <laughs> I guess on that note, I will pass it over to uh, Tanvir. I believe it's Tanvir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Tanvir Gill. Uh, I live in Kelowna. Um, special hi to Mr. Bateman. Um, I've been a member of Get to Know since 2011. Um, and Mr. Bateman, we've had the opportunity to meet a few times uh, in the last decade. Um, I've been involved in local and across Canada Get to Know initiatives. Unlike everyone else, I, uh, I I have artistic bones in my body, but not enough to win contests. So um, I wasn't part of any of the contests, but it was through Rotary actually that I got involved. Um, I was heavily involved in Rotary, which is how I met um, Dr. DeGrucci as well. And that's how um, I got involved with Get to Know as they needed some youth ambassadors. My main creative outlet is actually through um, sports, mainly outdoor sports. Um, and I also travel a lot, I've been to over 30 countries, uh, and those are sort of my main sources of nature as well. Um, currently, I'm a registered nurse, uh, and I'm also a supervisor in the operating room. Um, I've had to work in the pandemic as a nurse, which has been um, a challenge, to say the least, uh, especially without travel or team sports. Um, and that's definitely made me realize the importance of finding new ways to um, stay connected with nature. Um, I'm really grateful to be part of uh, Get to Know and echoing on what everyone else has said, we've created these friendships that will definitely last a lifetime. We're already planning our own little reunion. So that's uh, wonderful. And Mr. Bateman, thank you so much um, for everything that you've done. And it is a real honor to be on here today. And now I'll pass it on to Rachel Lane. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Rachel Lane, and I'm very grateful to be part of this reunion. Get to Know has certainly influenced my life in the most positive way. Um, I'm both a previous contestant and an ambassador for Get to Know, and it's really allowed me to express my environmental statement creatively through my art. Um, Get to Know has also allowed me the opportunity to meet and form friendships with like-minded individuals who are incredibly dedicated to environmental sustainability in their own creative passions. I'm a musician and I'm currently following a career in music. Um, this is part of a song I wrote in 2017 
And the animated video was actually done by Laura McCaltys, who is also a Get to Know alumni. The song is called One Day, and it's about the life of water and the way in which all life is connected. Feel the cool and steady water Drifting over as I wonder How such a simple thing gives life to everything In the yard there's a garden That we grew since we were children Watching life begin strength within in the quiet I feel the waves reminding me of how the world's changed oh won't you come back home again one day we'll dance in the rain Thank you again. Thank you. That, that was super, guys. It really, really was. And that really brings back the, some memories from uh, from the past uh, unconferences. And uh, I hope you guys can hang around later for the chat. I'd like to see, uh, chat with you further. Um, great to see what, what you're doing now. And uh, it really, it's quite, quite nice to see. It really is. So uh, right now, uh, just, just the interest of uh, moving the call along, I'm pleased to welcome Vicki Christensen from the USDA Forest Service who would like to comment on, on their long association with, uh, with Get to Know and to share some words uh, for Mr. Bateman and the rest of us. Uh, welcome, Vicki. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to participate uh, in this great event. And hello, Mr. and Mrs. Bateman. And wow, the influence uh, just by these incredible individuals is just heartening uh, of the connectivity that you have made to the environment and to arts. And you know, yesterday we celebrated Earth Day and today we are here to celebrate, you know, you, one of the artists whose works has brought Earth Day to life, who you have dedicated your career to helping people connect to nature, especially young people as we just witnessed. You know, I was lucky enough to make a connection early in life to nature because I grew up on a family forest in the Pacific Northwest in the state of Washington. And I wanted to be a forester for uh, almost as long as I can remember. And I have dedicated my career to helping people connect to their natural resources. And our purpose at the US Forest Service is to support nature in sustaining life. And part of our purpose is connecting people to nature that they depend on for life through conservation education. And like Mr. Bateman, we are committed to helping young people build lifelong connections to nature and their public lands and waters. And we need for our children to carry on our work and they won't if they stay isolated in their rooms or stuck on their devices. And they will carry on our conservation work only if we help them connect to all the wonder, the awe and the beauty of the great outdoors. And Mr. Bateman's work does exactly that. You know, we share his passion for connecting people to nature across the Forest Service at every organizational level. And conservation education is part and parcel of our work on every national forest and every national grassland. And it works. Each year we reach more than 12 million people wow. through our education and outreach. 
Mm. It works because we connect to kids right where they live, whether in urban or rural areas. And sometimes we connect to them on their national forest and grasslands. And that's great. But it's also great if we can connect them to green spaces in their neighborhood parks or their own backyards. So we work with visitors to our public lands, with parents and families, with classroom teachers, even online through digital applications. We are a natural partner for the uh, Robert Bateman, and I'm so pleased that we got to know him and establish a connection years ago. And I'm very proud that we've worked closely together through our collaboration and get to know your wild neighbors. For the Forest Service, Get to Know was a signature partnership in our More Kids in the Woods campaign starting in 2007. And our partnership started under Chief Gail Kimball and it flourished under Chief Tom Tidwell's leadership. So I'm very proud to be the third U.S. Forest Service Chief to support Get to Know. Super. As the lead partner in the United States, we built a framework for collaboration, including with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Edison International, and the Wildlife Habitat Council, and Wildlife Forever. The partners have relied on the Forest Service's Pacific Southwest region in California to pilot the program. And together with our partners, we have achieved success. Through Get to Know, we have reached tens of thousands of young people across the country, inspiring them to use the expressive arts as a way to connect to the natural world. And we've done other things together as well. The partnership hosted an unconference for partners and youth. We produced yearly calendars and we we created an online kids art gallery. And our partnership has now evolved into other work with Agents of Discovery, which uses mobile technology to actually connect kids with nature. And we know that Get to Know works because peer reviewed Forest Service research led by Dr. Patricia Winter showed that creating a work of art can connect you to nature, whether it's the fine arts, writing, music, or videography. Creating art reinforces every child's innate connection with nature. So on a personal note, it's really been a privilege and a pleasure to enjoy Mr. Bateman's painting, Family Hike, every day in my office for years. <laughs> Your painting is an inspiration, not just to me, but to the many hundreds of people who come into the chief's office each year. And Family Hike shows a multi-generational family enjoying a hike against a forest backdrop through a grassy field under a massive deciduous tree in fall colors. And your painting reminds us of our obligation in the conservation community to the next generation, the future conservation voters and practitioners of our world. And your painting reminds me personally of our conservation mission to sustain the health, diversity, and productivity of the nation's forests and grasslands to meet the needs of present and future generations. So I salute you, Mr. Bateman, for this lifetime of accomplishments in helping future generations connect to nature. It is a great personal honor for me to be able to recognize this lifetime commitment all around America and around the world. Again, the Forest Service is honored to have been a major US partner and get to know. And thank you for the opportunity to participate in today's event. It has truly been an honor for the Forest Service to partner with Robert Bateman and get to know your Wild Neighbors program. You have been and continue to be an inspiration to artists 
and conservationists across the world. Thank you. That's an honor to hear you say that. I just do what I've always loved and I would do it anyway. But wonderful people like Mary have picked up the ball and spread it around. That's terrific. And I'm glad that you get to see the picture in my office. Yes. And, um, it's, it's right behind the historic Gifford Pinchot desk, which I'm the 19th oh, chief of the Forest Service. Really? And every chief has sat at Gifford's desk and your uh, painting is right behind that desk. That's an important name to drop. If you have to drop it names. <laughs> it is. Thank you so much. You're a true inspiration. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. That was really nice. And it surely shows uh, uh, you've been the very, or the Forest Service and and, uh, and various chiefs that have uh, supported to get to know. We really appreciated it then and certainly appreciate it now in, in retrospect. And uh, it's really, really been, uh, been great to partner with you. A uh, li little bit of, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that Get to Know has its roots in the Bring Back the Peregrine program. And uh, uh, well, unfortunately, we've never really had a, a chance to celebrate the success of this program because it's, uh, it's often a, an expensive thing to follow up on and we never really had the venue to do that. So uh, in the next few minutes here, I'm happy to, uh, with the help of Blake Dixon, to, uh, to celebrate uh, the success of that program with you. Uh, so with peregrines, as I mentioned, it was an iconic species that disappeared from uh, uh, the, o the Okanagan Valley and for most of Canada, uh, probably by 1970. Um, and like most, and, and like peregrine falcons, the rest of the world, the species suffered from DDT pollution uh, uh, throughout most of the Western world. And it, it, this is a, a, actually an original advertisement for, uh, for DDT when we used to actually uh, spray it right on our kids. Uh, and uh, the, this was a miracle product that was uh, had a dark side, and certainly uh, the, the peregrine, like many other predatory birds, suffered tremendous declines and local extinctions uh, throughout the Western world, uh, no, throughout most of the world in the 1950s to the 1980s, uh, that resulted from uh, DDT-induced eggshell thinning, and this is what we saw across the, the world and, uh, and lost many of our populations. The last pair in the Kelowna area, in fact, the last pair in the interior of BC uh, was uh, Layer Cake Mountain. It's on the next slide here. Uh, this is a, a famous site um, uh, just outside of Kelowna and Gallagher Canyon, and that was in 1959. So 61 years ago, uh, that, the last peregrines were there. And I'm happy to say that this site is now occupied by peregrines once again, and has been for some time. Uh, and probably, or very likely, has its origins in the, in the very peregrines that were released uh, with the get the, uh, the bring back the peregrine program in the in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Uh, in Canada and the United States, uh, really, just to give you some background, there were pretty heroic efforts that went into captive breeding of peregrine falcons and and also the regulation of pesticides to to save the species. And um, it, by the 1990s, the world had cleaned up enough to allow peregrines uh, from these captive breeding sources to be used in trying to recolonize wild sites. So uh, what we did uh, is, in, in this case, when Mary's progr program, is we uh, purchased peregrines, in fact, with the, uh, the, Oka, the uh, people of Kelowna and businesses of Kelowna, led by Mary, uh, were to purchase birds. Here's a, at this next slide, you'll see Blake Dixon. Uh, with some pretty excited kids with some of the first peregrines that were going to be released in Kelowna. And these birds uh, were held in, with an old falconry technique uh, using hack boxes. In the next slide, you'll see here, these very simple technology. You can go, yeah, there are just some uh, hack boxes. We placed one of these boxes on top of Landmark Square in Kelowna and another one on Dilworth Mountain. And eventually uh, you, we just, uh, purchased these birds, put them in there, and to, uh, the whole uh, city got behind it and very, very excited by it. And at the same time, uh, the uh, kids, K to 12, were allowed uh, special presentations and they got involved with, uh, with the program and learned about more than just peregrine falcon uh, issues, but uh, the species at risk issues generally in, in Canada. And there was a tremendous educational unit that was delivered by Mary and her, and, uh, her cooperators on the wings of these few peregrines that were released each year uh, in, in Kelowna. So the program met with tremendous success and I can think of uh, really no one better uh, to let you know just how successful it was than to ask uh, Blake Dixon, formerly of BC Parks, who's a falconer, a peregrine and uh, someone who helped out a great deal with the Bring Back the Peregrine program. 
I'm going to ask Blake, as a as a person who lives in in the interior of BC, to give us an idea of uh, of just what's uh, happened with the population in interior of BC and and what the Peregrine has done in its return. Go ahead, Blake. Yeah, thanks so much, Gordon. I really appreciate it. And uh, I must say that Return of the Peregrine program has a a, a, a lot of success because of Gordon Court. And Gordon has a lot of experience with, with releasing. And uh, if it wasn't for him, I don't think the, the program would have been as successful as it was. My background is pretty much a, a falconry background. I've been a falconer since I was 12 years old and uh, had and been dealing with falcons, you know, pretty much ever since. And to do the releases in, in Kelowna was fairly technical and uh, as, as Gordon explained, but we're really seeing some success here. We're seeing some incredible success. We're seeing birds end up on nest sites that were not his, aren't, aren't historically there from, from the past. They're showing up on places up and down the valley on, on Okanagan Lake that they've never been in the past. And uh, they're also showing up in areas outside of the Okanagan that they haven't been seen in the past. Um, I've spent a fair bit of time just in the last couple of weeks, just uh, touring some of these areas. And uh, uh, Grand Forks, for, for instance, has now two nest sites, one in the north end and one in the south end, which is, I mean, that's, uh, and they're both occupied this year. As we come up the valley, if you go to the throne, which has been a historical site, you know, ever since the, you know, the, the uh, late 1800s, we're seeing birds there as well. And coming up into uh, the central Okanagan, McIntyre Bluff, birds are being seen there as well. And those are, those are confirmed nest sites. Those aren't just birds that are showing up. Those are birds that are confirmed. So as we come up the valley even farther, um, there have been this, historically been birds on Okanagan Lake on some cliff sites that that have been there pretty much you know ever since you know their extirpation back in the in the early or uh, well be the late 50, 1950s, but now they're showing up and just across the lake popping up again, and as we go down the valley even farther into Vernon. I'm seeing birds that are wintering there because I spend a lot of time on, in the field. I'm seeing birds that are wintering there, you know, as adults and as immature birds. And these adults are definitely birds that aren't moving south. They're staying there all winter. And because of that, I think there's a number of nest sites that we, we haven't even, even thought of that they're, that they're possibly nesting on. Uh, some of the birds, like one of the, one of the nest sites in Grand Forks, is it one of those big, high, monstrous cliffs? It's got cliffs all around it, yet the, the, the nest site that they used is a, is a short 100-foot piece of rock. It's just, you wouldn't expect that to be nesting there. And they're basically showing up in all kinds of different areas up and down the valley. Outside the valley, in Kamloops, they're showing up as well. And of course, the Fraser Canyon and Adam Paragas have been pro prolific throughout that area as well, and also, in, in uh, the lower mainland, the more lit lower mainland is seeing a number of, of, of increase in numbers as well. I'm not saying that this is because of our release, but definitely releasing 30 birds into the wild definitely had something to do with it. Gordon Court, fantastic. I'm, I really appreciate, appreciated working with, with Gordon. Robert Bateman, if it wasn't for you and, and bringing all of this to the, the forefront, you know, it's been, it's been a, a pleasure to work with some of the people that I've worked with throughout this whole program. And of course, my passion is falcons and falconry. And for me, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, having a having dessert every day when I see some of these birds flying by on a regular basis. So I salute to all everybody that we have that worked in the program. And thank you so much for offering me that opportunity, because for me, it was a personal gain in so many different ways. Thank you so much. Thank you, Blake. That's great. No, it's great to have that perspective and to know just how well they're doing there. And uh, it's certainly nice to have them back in the valley there and uh, certainly to have them uh, recover the way they have throughout, uh, throughout the world. So just on a personal note, I just think a few slides more here. Um, but with my time with the Bring Back the Peregrine program and the Get to Know program, I, I, I had the privilege to get to know Robert Bateman and 
each time uh, we met at conferences uh, or uh, Bob was out here for uh, any other events, we would swap birding stories and I was to learn eventually, you know, he's, he's the tremendous uh, experiences throughout his lifetime, uh, but it was to learn of his considerable frustration at seeing a, a great gray owl in the wild and it it always was a, a conversation so, starter. Of, of uh, not having seen one in the wild, you mean? Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Did I? Oh, yeah. yeah you're, you're not, <laughs> not having. I mean, but that's certainly the case. We And uh, so uh, so I live in good, great, great country here in Alberta. And, and I promised if he was out here, uh, we if he had the time, we'd try and get him some time uh, with the local great gray owls. So we tried several times. Um, we went out on uh, birding trips in the winter. We even visited uh, a pal of mine. Uh, who uh, inhabits a little place called Possum Lodge, if you remember that one, Bob. Uh, and we, we tried, uh, uh, we had varying uh, conditions to work with, but that uh, foggy day when we were out here with uh, Trapper McGregor here, uh, that day was to produce uh, some good looks at two great greys, I think. Um, can, uh, next slide, please. You can probably see what conditions we were working under, but we, we it was a frosty day I, and we certainly uh, had a good look at one of the birds. And then I think it was the same year, some weeks later, um, uh, Bob was able to join myself and legendary Owlbander uh, uh, Ray Cromie, and we were actually banding great greys uh, in, in some uh, some of our better great grey haunts. Uh, and then uh, we, I think, we caught two birds and banded them. And uh, so uh, it uh, here's, a, here's a slide of uh, the the one bird that I think this is the first bird we caught. The next slide there, please. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. And there, so uh, here they are, and uh, looking pretty happy to meet one another. There, so we, <laughs> so we, uh, we, we've heard, uh, we've heard from the great get to know um, ambassadors uh, or alumni here uh, about how fortunate they were to benefit so in so many ways from get to know. And as you can see, I was fortunate as well, having the privilege of birding several days in the winter with Robert Bateman on my home turf. So it was very, very special, <laughs> and, and I, I really enjoyed it. So. With that little bit of reminiscence, uh, I'll now ask uh, uh, Robert Bateman to say a few things uh, on uh, his thoughts and, and recollections of Get to Know and uh, anything else you want to add, uh, Bob. Take her from there. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, what's been going through my head the whole time is a quote from Margaret Mead, the, the great anthropologist. She said, uh, never think that a small group of dedicated people cannot change the world. Indeed, that's the only way the world has ever been changed, a small group of de dedicated people. And I think with Mary's leadership and uh, persistence, uh, I have felt the brunt of her persistence for <laughs> a number of years now. Um, the, a lot of people out there do the real work. And, um, and I, th I think uh, we can say that uh, through Mary's work, we have changed the world for the better. I think that's all. No, no, get to know, get well, to know the names. Yeah, by the biggest reminding me. <laughs> um, the whole, the, the, the name of the organization um, came from a, a comment I made to Mary. She said, if you could have one wish that, uh, uh, you know, in this area of education and nature and young people, what would it be? I said, it would be that young people would get to know the names of their neighbors of other species. And uh, I, I, I kind of regret to say, I think that one wish has not yet come true. It may be a little bit uh, better than it used to be, but most people kind of look, look out the window and say, you know, I've seen one bird, I've seen them all. I know it's not a duck, uh, but that's, a, but they don't care about its names. And I, uh, my retort, uh, having been, a, I was a high school teacher for uh, about 30 years, is uh, it does uh, a dishonor to nature to not care about their names. Um, it, it would be like saying, I've got a classroom full of kids, of students, and uh, I just love you. I, I, I really love young people. I don't care what your name is. Um, I don't need to care about you as an individual. Uh, just, uh, just you're wonderful and that's, that's all we need to know. No, 
We need to know each individual, what their name is, what their hopes and dreams are, what their potentiality is and all that kind of thing. And uh, that's really the, the, the heart of, of where the title came from. And of course, getting out there in nature and helping to preserve and protect and um, help with breeding success, that's all really important. But uh, boy, I, I wish that we could um, make even more progress on this uh, getting to know the names. It would help a lot if we got it into the schools. Um, but um, that, that's sort of an uphill battle. And uh, I think all the wonderful work that Mary and Gordon, everybody else has done is uh, it's something that is making the world a way better place. Eric is giving me a note. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, as Bir Birgit just said, I should make sure everybody, uh, many, many people are doing great work right now. No, the participants. And, and uh, yeah, and the participants uh, who participate in all these programs. And I'm sure just uh, like, uh, if you remember, I guess Quinn's picture's not still on there. Um, but uh, Quinn used to be a kid. I think we probably all used to be kids <laughs> and uh, maybe many, many of us still are. Um, and uh, just, uh, you know, to get that little trigger started and then it can metastasize in a good way and, and sp spread the word. And uh, if people know the names of their neighbors of other species, uh, they're bound to help protect the species which is bound to help protect the environment, which is bound to be good for all of us. So there's nothing but good can come of this program. Guess that, that's my little pep talk. Great, thanks very much, Bob. That's great. great. All right, I'll just keep, keep us moving here. Uh, uh, during the course of the uh, Get to Know program, we were able to draw on the support of a great many uh, people and, and some like our next speaker provided some pretty high profile endorsement for the program. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased to uh, welcome a few words from Dr. Ted Morton, former Minister of Sustainable Resource Development of the Government of Alberta, um, who I think you're in the States right now, Ted, but uh, take her away. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Robert. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here to play, to pay this well-deserved tribute to you. Uh, you have many different legacies. Obviously, your art is preeminent but it was really exciting today to listen to all the personal legacies you've left as well. Uh, those are just as important. I'm here to talk about yet another set of legacies you've left, which are policy legacies, and specifically in Alberta. Uh, our lives, our life, paths through life intersected while I was Minister of Sustainable Resource Development in the early 2000s. Uh, I thank Mary Clark for helping and Gord for facilitating that. Also, Dave Rodney, Dave, you remember Dave, Dave's watching and probably will be involved later. He played a big role there. But uh, I can't resist. I think I had a couple of slides there that, uh, like you, as a young boy, I grew up in a small town. I could, I lived on 12th Street. 15th Street was the city limit. So in uh, about five minutes, I could disappear into the wilderness and not come back until, uh, until uh, dinner time, sometimes with a fish, uh, sometimes with some sage grouse. Um, but that I didn't understand it at the time, but your get to know philosophy explained to me how my own youth shaped some of the things I've tried to do as an adult and specifically when I was minister. Uh, while I was minister, we worked on two major policy initiatives at SRD. One was the Land Stewardship Act and the other was the Bow Habitat Station. This is a map of Alberta. The Land Stewardship Act uh, represented a major step forward for Alberta after five decades of real growth economically and population wise, all of which was you know, very good in so many respects for so many families, but it was having a big environmental impact. The Land Stewardship Act organizes Alberta into seven different uh, watershed zones, requires long-term cumulative effects, land use planning. 90, 80% of us live in a very narrow little corridor from Edmonton down to the border. 80% uh, of our water is north of Edmonton. So you can capture the challenge there. Um, the Land Stewardship Act also introduced a number of new policy tools, conservation easements, uh, help for conservation easements, transfer of development credits. Uh, we set up a new program called the Alberta Land Trust Grant, now called the Alberta Land Stewardship Fund, which helps 
uh, groups like Nature Conservancy do major land grants. And uh, one in particular that I wanted to draw attention to was the Waldron Ranch. It's uh, one of the oldest, largest ranches in Southern Alberta, uh, 30,000 acres, there it is. You can see sits right in the foothills and the Land Stewardship Act really emphasizes stewardship and conservation in the foothills because that's of course the source of, of all the water from Southern and Central Alberta. So the Waldron Ranch is a, one of the examples of the success of our of this uh, land stewardship uh, and land stewardship act. Uh, the second one is the Bow Habitat Station, and uh, I'm going to turn over 66 seconds to I think a video from the wonderful woman that manages that Robin Sod that explains what it does. But you'll see it embodies the get to know spirit, the get to know philosophy in a very firsthand way. Station features a discovery center, fish hatchery, interpretive wetland, and trout pond. And these attractions include five galleries of interactive exhibits, aquariums filled with fish, an award-winning film, natural areas to enjoy, and so much more. And all of this is located just east of downtown Calgary in Pierce Estate Park. is an important part of the Government of Alberta's plan for public outreach. We offer programs, guided tours, and special events for visitors of all ages. We start teaching as early as two years old with our preschool program. Okay, thank you. And the, the Get to Know program has had uh, events there, and it embodies the Get to Know uh, philosophy with the focus on, on, on it's open to adults and children, but it has very much of, you can see the hands-on approach. What it didn't have when I came along was uh, an outdoor trout pond, which uh, we raised half a million dollars in one night working with Pheasants Forever, Trouts Unlimited, and Ducks Unlimited, half a million dollars in one night mm -hmm. uh, to help build, help build this pond. And we figured what better way to get the kids interested in what they've learned inside to come outside and, and actually the excitement of catching a fish particularly if you don't have to eat it, right? You just get to catch it and put it back. So we have, I think the next slide shows you can rent uh, during the summer. You can, you don't have to bring your own fishing pole. You can come there and learn to fish. And uh, Trouts Unlimited has, its mantra is a river without anglers is a river without friends. And the Discovery Center and the fishing pond are making a lot of friends for the Bow Habitat and Alberta's other rivers. And it embodies your get to know spirit, your get to know philosophy uh, perfectly. Uh, I'll finish on a personal note. Uh, you left me uh, at the end of our interactions with uh, the next slide, uh, a copy of the Get to Know, uh, the Get to Know painting that is so, so well known. Uh, we've built a new house in Whitefish, Montana. This hangs, it's interesting, one of the other speakers talked about hanging a picture of yours as an inspiration. This hangs in our down our lower level family room, but it's also where my 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 office is. So I see I look at this every day, uh -huh. and uh, it, it 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 captures that. And then last weekend, Easter weekend, I was with two of my grandchildren in Palm Springs, Palm Desert, and we were I took them almost every day over to a park where there a lot of ducks nesting. And I think you'll see in the next picture there were. Uh, particularly my granddaughter, the blonde, who's a little, uh, little older than our grandson. She was just fascinated with this hen mallard and the 12 little ducklings. So she, when she went back to school on Monday, they were asked, you know, what did you do over the Easter break? And all she could talk about was the mother duck and the ducklings and how brave the mother duck was protecting the ducklings and sitting on the eggs for 28 days and all of that. So in a certain sense, a lot of this was policy, but on a personal level, the circle closed with this when some of the organizers of today's event told me that the picture that we're hanging is actually your grandchildren as well. So yeah. the, circle, the circle closes. Uh, thank you for your art. Thank you for your inspiration. And thank you for your legacies.
and and thank you for the people who organized this today. It's been really wonderful. Thank you very much, Ted. That's great. I think we're going to move along with a, a video to introduce uh, Dr. Jack DeGrucci, a long-term board member of the GTK or Get to Know Society and uh, Kelowna resident. And he, he will have a few words to say just after the video. So uh, let's roll that one. Moments like these are hard to describe. During these moments, you feel connected to nature. You feel more alive. You feel like you're getting to know something new about the world. These moments are worth sharing. What's your get to know moment? Submit your nature inspired art, writing, photography, video, and music to the Rotary Get to Know Contest. Learn more about the contest at gettoknow.ca. Like Hi, Bob. Uh, this was when I was emceeing the event at Summerhill, and you and I had a chance to sit down and talk about bluebirds. And uh, you wrote on there that how blessed I was to have so many bluebirds in my life. And there are a lot of bluebirds on the screen today. And when you're blessed to have those people in your li life, it's beyond measure. As a young man, you, you have an event in your life. And, and when I was 10, Colin will appreciate, I was up above Long Lake in Saskatchewan on a sunset night. And I was for two hours trying to mimic the sound of a nighthawk. And after about two hours, this nighthawk flew right down about 10 feet from me and walked up to me. And what did that say? It hmm. said that all species are intelligent, including the virus, and that when we, but they're afraid of us. And who wouldn't be afraid of human beings? Sometimes regarded as the most intelligent, stupid species on earth. <laughs> so bluebirds, uh, you know, I love the peregrine falcon and it's the top of the food chain, I know. <laughs> but I personally really love bluebirds. The chairman before me was Ken Curley. He became a bronze artist and I, I'm sure you know Ken as well and created this piece and uh, which I have in my office. And uh, it's Benji uh, holding up to the bluebirds. And sitting next to it is uh, peace pools. Uh, Rotary, I've been a three-time president of Rotary. And I want Rotary to continue the legacy that you've started, uh, Bob. And uh, Mary knows that for a while, we tried to get them to include the word environment in their policy, and they wouldn't. They always felt everything comes from the bottom up. But I want you to know that today we have an environmental sustainability Rotary Action Group in all of the 200 countries that Rotary is. We have a Rotary Action Group for Peace. And I was at the first meeting and they chose Vancouver to have that meeting um, where they were saying that the environmental sustainability and world peace are uniquely connected. And so Beyond that, I felt that, you know, you, you've inspired me. We, when our paths cross with a human, another human being, you'll be surprised at the effect. And uh, so presently I'm working uh, with another artist and uh, he's created a uh, beacon of hope. Mm. And uh, we're going to put this up in Kelowna and we'll be the first city to do one. And, it, and I believe these will be all over the world. And that light that you see there is his experience when he died for five minutes and he worked it out with his father and he saw this incredible light, which is now being studied by John Hopkins and others too, that it could be healing to us. So we're, we're working on a beacon of hope and, and it's done through a foundation called Hour for Hour that all of us need to close our eyes for a moment and remember who we honor. Who was that before you, Bob? that you remember, that, that you honor, that with their sacrifice before you helped you. And so as we do that, then we have a chance to continue to build and do good today for the future of my three children and eight grandchildren. Your paintings of the, under the tree, your painting of your grandchildren, 
it really resonates with me because the love that you see in their eyes or in any human being's eyes, right? There's something very profound about the miracle of birth and the miracle of life. But the four-way test of Rotary, when it says, is it true? Is it fair to all concerned? Would it build goodwill and be beneficial to all concerned? Many times they're talking about your relationships with each other as humans. But I believe that Rotary now is extending that to the other species, to mother nature, and that we can do better. We are capable of doing so much better. And it was so evident in all of the presentations here today. I'm sure Mary and Bob, you were, or Gord, you're, you probably all moved to tears with these young people and the work that they've been doing. They are amazing. And there's many, many coming. And uh, Rotary looks forward to uh, uh, the next 21st century of uh, building uh, a cleaner, greener, healthier, and more peaceful planet in any way we can. And Bob, just thank you for you. Thank you for what you've done. Uh, your work has inspired so many and your, your care for nature is unparalleled. Yeah, hear me though. And I love that you were a teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. Incidentally, Birgit's father who passed a few years ago was a very active Rotarian in Vancouver. Um, great. great. Yes, thank, thank you very much, Jack. That was great. I'd just like to call on uh, Mary Jo Shrimp and uh, Mary Clark, uh, long-term, uh, long-time friends and the Keystone people behind uh, both the Bring Back the Peregrine and the Get to Know program to, uh, to say a few words. Um, uh, I'll, I'll put you on the spot here, Mary. Um, actually, before I get started, is there any way we can get Bob and Birgit to pop? There you are. Hi. There you go. I'm, uh, I'm here. Hi, Bob. Bob. there. And I can see Birgit's hand popping in. Hi there, Joe. Great to see your face and hear your voice again. Great to see you. I'm a little close, but I really want to give you a big hug. But listen. Um, Hi, Mary. Uh, there, <laughs> there, a big hug all around. Um, listen, my, my primary purpose today is just to, to basically express what everybody wanted to convey early on. And I think they did it mar mar marvelously. And that's just a, a very sincere word of thank you, both to Bob and to Birgit. Um, I, my thoughts and my memories certainly are over a decade of you two traveling across Canada and sometimes into the States, taking media interviews, talking to countless people and just being absolutely, you know, completely giving up yourselves. So the two of you are the two that I, all of us wish to thank tremendously for all the work that you've done to hear the words that the young people have said to inspire, to impact, to influence them in countless ways. And um, I know you both have all your life lived the whole get to know concept of actually getting to know your wild neighbors and also the relationship that has with human health and the planet's health. But I think you probably, I'm hoping after hearing these wonderful ambassadors today, have a real sense, back to your quote, Bob, about Margaret Mead, how these are a really incredible young group of people, a small group of people who will continue to make a difference in their very own and creative ways. Um, so I'm impressed with what all you people have done. And uh, I think what we want to do for both of you is send out a big hug and a thank you for everything. And now take some time and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see you before you go. <laughs> and then to Mary. Okay, well, thanks, Mary Jo. Mary Jo always says it so well. And um, it is just so lovely to see so many amazing um, people that are on the call today, and we, we are going to open up the, the floor in a few minutes. Um, but I do want to just generally say there are so many wonderful people on this call, as you said, Bob, that have supported you and Birgit in this amazing work. And I, I hate to mention anyone in particular, because you're all so amazing. And one thing that I have not, I don't think ever shared with you, Bob, that happened uh, when we were doing the, in the early days of doing the return of the Peregrine Falcon was I had a very small office. Gord, do you remember in Landmark? Just yes, a I closet. <laughs> I mean, basically a closet with three of us in it, just working <laughs> to get all this stuff done. And someone came to our door one day and 
you know, I'm like, no, sorry, I'm, I'm busy. And he said, no, no, you have, you have to see this guy. And he was a very large, he was from the um, First Nations group, the West Bank First Nations. And he was a spiritual leader of some type. And I, I regret that I didn't get more information about him. But he had felt moved to come to find us. Like, I take this for all of us, not just for me personally, Bob, but all of us, our, our team, uh, the youth, all of us that have been working on this. And he <coughs> said, you know, I'd like to get a peregrine feather. And I said, well, I don't know if I can get you a peregrine feather. <laughs> That's a little, uh, you know, hard to do. But he said, I wanted to let you know that the work that you have been doing for these birds because they are the most powerful creatures in nature is going to give you and I take that in the cumulative all of us like they have been working on these projects together a great voice and I was sort of overwhelmed because that's not the everyday thing that happens in your office <laughs> and he said yeah I I needed you you to know that so mm -hmm. I'm sort of Nice. listening to all of this and thinking wow what a special moment that was because it just happened and then he was just gone and I, I don't really know his name I, but he wanted me to know that and so I think that and I'm so glad Blake and Gord that you were able to share the the recovery of the birds and and how it really did come out of that and and it's like one thing has led to another all this this good and, and Bob, like you said, the, the getting to know the names, you, you always tell, you say you don't tell long stories, you tell wide stories, right? <laughs> wide stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I listened to them a lot over the, the years, as Mary Jo said, in the US and Canada. And I really marveled. And I think maybe it was from you painting so much that you, like that person that came to my office, have a spiritual connection to nature is my theory but I've never heard anyone else speak so powerfully about the very foundation of caring for the planet that it is in getting to know the names and I'm getting a little emotional but it's such a the power and the importance of us helping kids connect with nature and that all these other things are all very important. It's not to take away from climate change and all the million things we need to get done. But it's almost like the things that you hear when, when experts say it's those first six years, the formative years of the child's brain that lays the foundation for the life. Well, in the environmental movement, it's that, form, that formation, the solid foundation of knowing the names because that is where caring begins. And so... Everyone has said it much better than I could, but thank you for, for teaching me that. And I really took the message and have been working now, ironically, using tech when we were so against tech, <laughs> telling kids to get off screens, which was important because we don't want them experiencing nature through a screen, but we want them experiencing nature. And if we can strategically use the screens to accomplish that, well, then let's do it because it's about where we want to get to. It's about achieving the goal of helping kids get to know and learn to care and join us in our work together to save the planet. So here, here, just, yeah. just to introduce a little uh, plebeian tip. If you're going to be on a screen, just be out of doors the same number of hours each day. Yes. Yeah, that's all sure. I ask for is a bit of balance. I'm not against screens. Uh, I use the iPad all the time as reference for my paintings. I used to use eight by 10 prints. Yeah. But um, it, if you're going to be on a screen for an hour, be outside for an hour. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, good advice, little, good advice. <laughs> yeah. The screen in this case I'm referring to is that little tiny screen like I know, you, yeah, the, yeah. you take out and it can help you make the connection so you can get to know. It can, yeah. Right. And you can play bird, play and record bird bird calls. Yeah. You can identify them now. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty neat technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, well, so thanks. much for needing, needing a naturalist, Gore. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're handy though. They're handy. <laughs> well, well, thanks, Mary Jo, and thanks, Mary. Um, 
I just like to uh, well we're coming close to the end of the formal program before we have a little back and forth. Uh, but I'd like to ask uh, Peter Ward, president of the Bateman Foundation, to uh, to say a few words as well. Go ahead, Peter. Great, thank you, Gord, and hello. My name is Peter Ord, Executive Director at the Bayman Foundation, uh, calling here from Victoria, the traditional territory of the Songhees and the Squamalt Nations. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Mary and her team for inviting us to participate in the reunion. And it's just such a thrill to see firsthand how the, the impact of the program and to meet all the participants and where they're going. It's really, really exciting. Uh, the mission of the Bateman Foundation is to engage people to the health and beauty of nature through the lens of art. So it's really fantastic to see this legacy carry on in so many different forms, particularly in parallel to get to know. Um, so we do that from the Robert Bateman Gallery, as, as you can see right in front of you. Uh, that was established in 2013. 13, and of course, our founder and patron, Robert Bateman, uh, was so incredibly instrumental with that, as was uh, Brigitte Fravey Bateman and the Bateman family. Uh, the, the gallery uh, features works of art from Robert and also from up and coming other artists. So Colin, I hope to see you in there sometime. Um, and it was really exciting last year, uh, we celebrated Mr. Bateman's 90th birthday. Uh, so that uh, that's quite an achievement in itself. Of course, we had to limit the number of events and parties we could do because of COVID. <laughs> but one of the things we did was we uh, sent out 33,000 sketchbooks across Canada uh, as part of that celebration. And 33,000 is actually the number of days you live when you're 90. So oh, we figured I, that Robert... I'm, not, I'm no good at arithmetic. <laughs> well, we figured you were probably painting when you were one. So that's why we <laughs> counted all days. Um, and over here, you can see the inside of the gallery and of course, all our programming. If you could change the slide, please. Is it possible to change the slide? Thank you, perfect. Yeah, and I think our, uh, the one thing I wanna end up with is, uh, or end with is the focus of our Nature Sketch program, which is very similar to the Get to Know, but it's, uh, it's really how we get kids and adults out into nature. We teach them how to, uh, draw and sketch and of course using the philosophy of Robert and sometimes we try to use his uh, sketching techniques and painting techniques uh, but really it's all about getting people outside and it's about more about process than the final result um, and, paying and, so attention. We, and paying attention absolutely and getting to know and increasingly we use art science and uh, indigenous knowledge in a, in, a, in, a, in a collaboration to understand what they're looking at so I just want to finish by saying thank you very much for uh, having us. And on behalf of the Bateman Foundation, the board, our staff, uh, we're so happy to be here. More than ever, it's so important due to the anxieties from things like the pandemic and climate change and social injustice that we need to make nature and art much more important in the lives of all Canadians and Americans. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you, Peter. That was what I'd like to uh, like to do finish up here is we're we're hoping to have a, an open forum uh, just with a few questions to, uh, for for Bob. Uh, if uh, if you wanted to take that over, Mary, with any chat room uh, questions that might have come your way. Okay, uh, yeah. um, I could start with a comment from Ryan. Hi, Mr. Bateman. You and your work have been a huge inspiration for me ever since I painted a barred owl for the Get to Know program in 2011. I would like to thank you so much for the wonderful work from you and everyone in the foundation. Great. So okay. there's a nice note. Um, then there's a note from Sandy Frost. A comment to share with Mr. Bateman. It is difficult to put into words what an indelible and enduring impact Mr. Bateman has had in my life. As a teen who loved art and running around in the woods, and neighborhood creeks in Wisconsin to my 38 year career with the Forest Service, Mr. Bateman's work has been a constant inspiration. I first saw an original Bateman at the Lay Yaki Woodson Birds in art exhibition. I remember standing and standing and standing in awe. I didn't know such art was even possible. I wanted to be able to capture and share the magic of nature in some small way, and nature art has been a guiding light in my personal life and in my professional career with the Forest Service. It has been the singular honor of my career 
to have had the opportunity to work with Mr. Bateman and the Get to Know program in the U.S. Forest Service. Wow. The impact you have had on me and on the many, many, many young people we have touched through Get to Know is a lasting and indelible legacy for us all. Wonderful. Wow. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> So I don't know, Bob, if you want to respond to those or if Sandy, either you or Ryan want to add anything further. I, I could just say the, the Lee Yaki Woodson Art Museum is, it's a, it's I think unique in the world. It's an annual uh, show of, of art to do with birds at this, uh, in Wausau, Wisconsin, which is famous for insurance companies. And they have a, a nice little art museum and they have this annual show and artists come from all over the world from Japan and from Germany and, and from uh, England and of course mostly America and Canada and it's a great gathering of the clans that's the, the thing about it and um, I'll just say this one other thing um, the, the uh, if you are picked to be in the show you get treated like a prince or princess more than you would ever uh, get. Nor normally most, uh, most of us who do wildlife art, not me because I get over appreciated, but you're, you're working away and half the time your spouse uh, doesn't even understand what you're doing. And, um, and so you're just kind of working in isolation. All of a sudden here you are with the creme de la creme of the of world artists and our first trip there with, uh, with Birgit and I, we were picked up by the main doctor in town in his Mercedes. And he said, I am going to be your gopher. Uh, I'm at your beck and call for the whole weekend. Um, and I'll make sure you get here on time and the banquet on time. And, and we go out in, in the, up into the Lake District where somebody's got a beautiful summer home up there and swim and fool around. And, and, and then you just have a good, a good time with your colleagues. Well, in our case, somebody like Carl Brenders came over from Belgium and people from Germany, et cetera, Japan, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite a thing to get uh, in, if there are any uh, people watching who, who want to uh, look it up, you could check with me on my website and my secretary can let you know how to do it to uh, get involved with that. So that, that's just an aside, it's nothing to do with our work here, but it's- uh, Nice that it inspired him. Yeah, I, I found it inspiring and very, um, it's, it's great to know there are other oddballs out there like you. I, and hi, I'm, I'm Sandy and I'll, I'll just add Mr. Bateman. I, I'm sorry, I've got big tears in my eyes and I'm all verklempt. Um, I just happened to grow up in, in central Wisconsin on a little farm, kind of a, a mm. farm kid. Um, and um, my uh, dad was a great lover of nature. And he said, let's go to this art museum. And um, it's about 50 miles away and walked in. And I absolutely did that. I stood and I stood and I stood. And it was your work that just transfixed me. And it changed my world. I, I, you know, I'm not good with words, but um, it changed my world. And um, and I've spent the rest of my life um, working to connect kids and people with nature. And in that first incredibly impactful experience that I had with your art has just been this guiding light. And um, the chance to work with Mary and all of these wonderful people and bring your work to the United States and get to know, I mean, it really, I said, it's a singular honor and it truly is. And one other wonderful connection, Mr. Bateman and, and Mrs. Bateman, I don't know if you recall um, when you visited the Copper River Delta in Alaska for the Cordova uh, Copper River Delta Shorebird Festival, yes. but I was the person behind that and oh. this this year they are celebrating their 31st Copper River Delta Sh Shorebird Festival and your contribution your participation is one of their absolutely guiding lights and it's it's transformed 
into a celebration of the shorebird migration of wetlands, but also a celebration of art. And um, mm. they uh, just treasure the, the time that you came to visit and, and help the community out. So well, thank, thank you. I, who thank who you. knew that we'd be uh, extolling the virtues of mud? <laughs> <laughs> it's a wondrous thing during spring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding us about that wonderful visit. That was really, really special. Thank you. And the shorebirds are coming back in, in just the next 10 days. So uh, they come back every year. <laughs> Bob and Birgit, there's a, a note here from the executive director of the National Association for Interpretation. Mr. Bateman, several years ago, I was asked to put together a national webinar exploring the cross section between the art and the environment. As both a former state art council director and state parks director, I was eager to learn who the leaders were in this area. Very quickly, I learned that you were preeminent among them. I was proud to showcase Get to Know during the webinar, and I thank you for your inspirational leadership in harnessing the power and inspiration of the arts to instill a sense of wonder, awe, and stewardship of the natural world. Respectfully, Millward Simpson. Mm. That's lovely. Super. Mm -hmm. That's him. And Millward is, is the, the the director of the National Association for Interpretation in the United States. I have had the pleasure of working with him lately in Millward. Thank you so much. I don't know, Bob, if you want to respond to that. Well, uh, it, it, it again is just such a, an honor that a, such a illustrious people are, you know, um, kind of joining in uh, with something that, again, I keep thinking it's Mary, <clears throat> started this whole thing and spread it out. And I'm just indulging myself. <laughs> at least I'm good at something. Yeah, Millward, thank you for joining because Millward is making a huge difference with NAI. Wow, the preeminent interpretive association really in, in the continent, I would say. Well, Mary and uh, Robert, uh, interpretation is a communicative art form and uh, there's no end to the, uh, to the power of harnessing all forms of art and instilling this stewardship we so desperately need in the natural world. And I'm so pleased to be able to help celebrate uh, you, Robert, and your uh, great vision among, uh, among everyone who's been working in this field. Um, your shoulders are uh, so important for us all to stand on going forward. Thank you so much, and thank you for what you do. Thank you, sir. Real work. <laughs> Ellen, I know, Ellen, one of the Get to Know Youth would like to, if you'd like to go quickly, Ellen. Sure, thank you very much. Hi, Mr. Bateman. Um, I'm Ellen Rowe. I participated in the conference about 12 years ago now. I was trying to do the math earlier um, in 2009, and then um, had the pleasure of coming to the UnConference in Jasper in 2011 um, and have met so many incredible youth, many of the presenters we've had today, um, and just kind of fostered a great community around getting outdoors and celebrating our passion for photography or art or combination. And um, you had made a comment earlier about getting get to know um, word of mouth and more uh, a better understanding of get, what get to know is into the school. And I just wanted to tell you that when I was in grade seven and eight, um, our science teacher told us all about Get to Know and that's how I kind of came across mm -hmm. the art contest. Yeah. So it is already there. And um, with that being about 12 years ago, I, I assume that it's grown in the uh, Toronto public school uh, district as well. So I just wanted to let you know of um, that, that accomplishment has already happened. And I hope that it continues into the future because what what an incredible experience um so many fun memories um and even as as we started the the conference today the reunion um i had a pair of um uh cardinals outside my window and was using my phone to take some pictures and so thank you very much for your influence and um support 
when we won in 2009 and um, so so many young people have definitely benefited from this so thank you very much for sharing your passion with us all. I'm jealous of your Cardinals. We live on the <laughs> wrong side of the Rockies. <laughs> have I'll here. send them your way. <laughs> right. Mary Bunka, we've got, Gord, do we have time just for two more quickly? Mary Bunka? Hi there. Sorry, I couldn't unmute for a minute. I just wanted to say I'm a, a former uh, youth ambassador with Get to Know uh, through Rotary as well. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you so much to, to Mr. Bateman, but also to Mary and, and to everyone who's been involved in the program. It's, it's left me with treasured memories uh, of animal encounters all over the world um, and introduced me to a group of people with artistic and, and fiercely conservational flames burning in them. Um, Get to Know has inspired me to share the things I love most about our planet and my own backyard from the house out tides to wild Okanagan sunflowers. I've been involved uh, through Get to Know in a lot of kids camps and, and uh, artistic endeavors outside um, and it's been the most rewarding part of my life so far. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, Really, this this legacy of get to know is is moving on, as Ellen said, and is is still very much impacting people's lives. and And we just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Okay, and one Bree, you get the final word, and then we're we're going to make it a wrap. And... You're muted. Muted. Technology. Um, I was also one of the youth participants about a decade ago with uh, the contest, the camps that were co-run with Parks Canada and the unconferences. And what I loved about the opportunities was that it gave us a chance to chat with youth from all over the country, get different points of view, learn about the environments that maybe we hadn't seen before, and also chat with not just people in our age group, but people um, from all sorts of places and learn different perspectives and explore uh, different opportunities. And from those camps, uh, it led me to continue working in outdoor education. So I've been uh, an outdoor educator and interpreter with Parks Canada and with Ontario Parks and up in the Yukon. Mm. From that, I've met youth all over the country and they've really shared with me their interest and excitement and continuing to learn about outdoor spaces. So thank you. Great, you've had great experiences. <laughs> yeah. Our parks are, we're, we're so blessed with our parks. Sure. Okay, Gord. Okay, yes, the, I, I'd, uh, I guess this will bring to a close the, uh, the formal part of this call. And I'd like to thank everyone who participated. Uh, I think it's, uh, all my head will be spinning for days here thinking of uh, memories of, uh, of all those unconferences and, uh, and, and wild festival for youth uh, uh, and all the people that, that made them so successful. And uh, so again, I'd like to thank all of you and uh, great to see you again, Bob. And uh, yeah. I'll, I'll maybe after COVID, I'll get out there. Uh, uh, my brother's got a house out there not far from me. So I'll, uh, I'll get out there and uh, maybe pop in and see you. Look forward to it. And I'm afraid you will not be able to bring a great gray owl, but uh, <laughs> I always, uh, you're better looking than great gray owls. But other, other than that, that's what I always think of. Well, I'm getting pretty gray. I can tell you that. More white than gray now. <laughs> great white owl. Yeah, yeah, really that's right. Snowy owl. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a, a few words with the, uh, with the team here uh, afterwards. But uh, again, that's the end of the program. And anything else you'd want to say, Mary? Well, no, everyone's welcome to unmute and we're just going to kind of hang out. Yeah. Um, Bob, you certainly welcome to stay or, you know, I thought, I know um, Peter had said you had just 90 minutes today, but we thought it would be fun just to kind of open up the floor and have a, a fun, um, just get to know. And I'm sorry, it sounds like Eric had to leave, but Eric Pringle uh, sent a very nice note too. He has the family hike print and the flying eagle in his home. <laughs> So I think he's left, but yeah, if everyone wants to just unmute. Oh, Deanne in LA, hey Deanne. <laughs> so if, if everyone would like to unmute and just feel free, Gord. I'll hang around for a few minutes and then I have to get going. Okay, great.
Hey, Deanne, why don't you say a few words from LA? I'm so sorry that council member Tom LaBange isn't with us because I know he would have loved to uh, be here. Unfortunately, he passed earlier this year. He was, you might remember him, Bob, a tremendous supporter of Get to Know. He had been in Jasper at the end conference. Just so Deanne, I don't know if you'd like to say a few words from LA. You guys have been such a great partner. Sure. So yes, I am from Los Angeles. And so um, Mary brought the Get to Know program to us and it was wonderful. You know, just, you know, LA, we don't, we don't have as much nature <laughs> as you do there up there in Canada, right? But we do have our beautiful spots here and um, just being able to have our kids be part of that and um, a part of the art program. And thank you, Mr. Bateman, definitely. Um, you are um, your paintings, your beautiful artwork that you would have shown to us and um, shared with all of us and, and our youth as well. And, and I can't remember, Mary, did we actually, were we able to send one of our youth to the unconference? Yes. We did, right? Yeah. And Tom yeah. went as well. And Tom went as well. I mean, what yeah. a great experience just for someone from the inner city to be able to travel and to see something completely different. So thank you so much for everyone that was involved in the program and um, allowing us to just be a, that little part of it because it has definitely made a difference in so many lives. So thank you again. You're close to Baja, which is a great <laughs> place to visit. It definitely is, yes. I'm glad we can travel there again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, good. And John, I see John Lawrence. John, are you there? Mary, can I say something if John's not oh. going to talk right away? <laughs> of course, Myrna Pierman. But yes, absolutely. So great to see you. Thank you. So my name is Myrna Pierman. I'm the recently retired biologist at a wonderful bird sanctuary in central Alberta called Ellis Bird Farm. I have the distinction of having known Mary longer than any of you here. We That's met true. in a biology class at the University of Alberta. <laughs> so many amazing adventures. Bet you could tell us some stories. Yes, I could, absolutely. So Mary and I actually, when she first was thinking about this program, I drove up to Edmonton and met with her and we had an original chat. And of course, she took off and, and has achieved such great things. So Mary, I'm very proud of you, having known you all of these decades. Mr. Bateman, I did also attend some unconferences, and I appreciate everything you've done. You will probably not remember, but you wrote a forward to a book I wrote in 2000 called Naturescape Alberta, Creating and Caring for Wildlife Habitat at Home. And that book has sold many thousands of copies oh, and has is, needs to be reprinted. But I am very honored that you wrote the forward to that. And it's just so proud to have your name. And you did sign one of my copies and I have it in a treasure box down in my basement. <laughs> I just wanted to finish off by saying a huge thanks to Gord Court. Gord, I know you've been involved with the Get to Know program, but you have been a mentor and friend to so many people <laughs> so many young biologists, so many of us naturalists in Alberta. You have reached out, you have not been kind of the bureaucrat, you have been the friend and you have extended your expertise and support to so many of us in Alberta. So I just wanna say a huge thanks to Gord Court for all of the great work that you have done. Well, thank you very much, Myrna, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> hey Mary, it's Doug Marta here. I have to leave, I've got an online class at U of C coming up. Um, but I just wanted to say thanks to everybody. It was really insightful and really interesting to see um, everything that was going on. Mary and I go back a long ways when I was with City to Calgary. That's right. You were in L.A. I was in L.A. actually. And uh, it was it, it's it's really um, I don't know. What, I can't really find the words to say that to see this organization do what it's been able to do. Um, and Mr. Bateman, I actually have some of your work in my house, and mm -hmm. it, it's a prominent place in our house. Um, the connection to nature, I mean, I've got grandkids, and it's just so important. I spent most of my adult life developing open space and parks. I was 30 years with Calgary Parks. I was just, I'm on the board of Glenville Ranch Provincial Park Foundation, and I just sent a note to Mary to talk about an opportunity 
for those of you that are not familiar, Glumbo Ranch Provincial Park is a park that encompasses the Bull River from Calgary all the way to Cochrane, about 40 kilometers of park space between Haskane Park and Glumbo. Haskane was the last project I built before I retired. And um, as I was listening to everybody, this could be a huge opportunity. So Mary and I are going to chat further on that because I think there's some really interesting things that could come out of it. So I'm going to talk to my board after Mary and I have a chat and we'll see how this evolves. But I have to leave. As I mentioned, I've got a class online. That's what I do in my retirement as I go to university. So um, thanks everybody. It was a real pleasure to meet everybody and see what's going on. And hopefully we'll be able to chat again at some point in time. Great cool. to see you. Thank you so much, Doug. And thanks for all that the city of Calgary did. No, no problem. And let's chat soon and we can see if this thing can evolve. Yeah. Okay. Bye all. And Bye. Brian, Brian Harris, one of the leads of Get to Know in Southern California. How good to see you, Brian. How are you doing, Mary? Good to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun to listen in on all this stuff, but uh yeah, we had a lot of fun down in Southern California. Um, sorry to hear about Tom. I did not know that. That's unfortunate. Yeah, very yeah, sad. But, you know, I think a couple of the highlights, uh, you know, one of the events that we did, I think I think Wyland was with us with the Wyland Foundation. Oh, yeah. And uh, my, my oldest daughter got to come along too. And and speaking of the events we did in, uh, in uh, Hollywood, she got to participate in the Hollywood uh, uh, Christmas Parade, which was a lot of fun. But uh, Bob, if you bear with me for one second, right after she did that, the next day, um, let's see. Oh, I can't share my screen. I was going to show you a, 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 a piece of art that she did the next day that, you know, while she didn't meet you personally or anything, but she was certainly inspired by the whole uh, Get to Know program. So she knocked out this pretty cool picture of, uh, I think it's a pencil of, of a tiger, and it's just outstanding, actually. So, mm -hmm. so thanks for you know, in a, in a kind of a distant way, having an influence on my daughter as well. Good to go. I think you can share the screen now, by the way. Oh, really? Let me give it a try here real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is what she knocked out just the next day after participating. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. That was kind of fun, isn't it? Very powerful. <laughs> and then she's got on to just continue to do lots of wildlife stuff, so. Uh, good stuff. She, uh, you know, is in her mid to late twenties now, but any any spare time she has. Was uh, that pastel or what was the medium? You know, um, it must be. Yes, I think it is pastel. Oh, pastel. Yeah. yeah. But thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's great to see you, Brian. We had a lot of fun with Will. <laughs> we did definitely. We'll be right back. <laughs> and with the Wildlife Habitat Council, Julia, is that you or Pat? Oh, did we lose you? Maybe on mute. Oh. Forgive me, I've got a mute button on my headset and I've got a mute button on Zoom. And sometimes if I don't check one or the other, then I continue to talk. Oh, well, my name at Canada. Oh, well, Len Ugarenko was such always such a huge and kind help. He was definitely before my time. I've been with Wildlife Habitat Canada now for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I've heard lots about him, but have never had the pleasure. Mm -hmm. When I was on mute, I was saying, my name is Amanda Mangan, uh, and I've taken on the, um, the wonderful wildlife art competition that we run that was started by Robert Bateman. So I've been very influenced lately. We've been we started a Meet the Artist video series, and both artists so far have wildly said how inspirational they were from Robert Bateman. And they both didn't know at the time that the stamp program that we run now was started and influenced by his original painting. That's great. Can you tell us a little bit about your program? So back in 1985, Wildlife Habitat Canada was formed um, with Environment Canada. Uh, that's now called Environment and Climate Change Canada. And um, 
they started with um, a with with Robert Bateman making the original painting, and I'm I I have to apologize. My both my kids are home uh, with virtual school and daycare closures, so I'm upstairs. So you don't I have a um, the original painting usually behind me in my office, but uh, one of his original paintings became a stamp, and that stamp was affixed to the migratory game bird hunting permit, and um, the proceeds from the sale of that stamp come back to Wildlife Habitat Canada, and we run a, a conservation program, a conservation grant program, where we offer funds to conservation organizations throughout Canada, and we've been doing that now since 1985. So each year we host a, each year we host a, an, a wildlife art competition where artists, Canadian wildlife artists submit their pieces based on the species that's selected. And then that piece becomes a stamp that's affixed to this permit. And then Wildlife Habitat Canada also sells prints that are signed by the artist. And some of the artists do about 10 to 15 remarks at the bottom of the painting as well. And uh, of course we do have the stamp, but it, as everyone can know, stamps aren't as popular as they were in the 80s. Uh, so we've seen a decrease in the sale of a collector item. Um, and we're trying to figure out how to pivot from that. Uh, but the stamp itself is still affixed to the permit. And the price of the permit is half stamp and half regulatory permit. But it's all because Robert Bateman started with his mallard pear painting. Um, that was it's one of my favorites. So I have, I, I purchased that one for myself. Was that the same painting as the one that won the duck stamp? Cause that was a mallard too. Uh, so Bob was, I guess Bob's not there, but yeah, he, I'm here now. It, was that the same painting you did for <laughs> wildlife habitat Canada as you did for the duck stamp that, cause the duck stamp you did in the U S in 83 sold more stamps. I think Millward, you might remember about this than any other duck stamp in history or something. Yeah, I, well, I did um, a pair of mallards. Um, I didn't want to get into this whole duck stamp thing. <laughs> uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and they just kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. And so I said, okay, what should I do? And they said a pair of mallards front and center. I said, oh no, mallard is the most boring bird and I don't like the combination of green and yellow and rust. It's, it doesn't suit me at all. So I gave you the rear end of the male mallard <laughs> and I, did, I gave you the broad side of the female is much more interesting to look at uh, than the male. <clears throat> and I put them on thin ice because that's where uh, our wildlife habitat is on thin ice in many places. I didn't know that part. Thanks, Robert. That's amazing. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I do like the lesser scalps, though. Is that, is that, you, do you, is that how you say it properly? I, I I'm, say scalp. Scalp. But, but it looks like it could be scalp. I, I bought that one for my mother-in-law, and she loves it. She's a I huge mean, fan of yours as wave. well. Yeah. Ones where they're flying around the birch trees. Let's see if I can find it here. So oh, is that the same painting, Millward, as the duck stamp one? That's what I think. I'm still a little. That was my memory. Okay. So, so Bob, you, you had the same painting in, in both the U.S. duck stamp and the Canadian Wildlife Habitat Council stamp competition then. Uh, hmm. It's unlikely I'd do the same mm, for okay. the American and the uh, Canadian. Um, Not as familiar with the American one as I am, obviously, with the Canadian one. Um, right. So I'm not sure. I know that the 1985 Mallard Pear is our inaugural painting, though. Mm, yeah, right. And I got the Mallards out of my system, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm hmm. totally taste good. <laughs> oh. I don't, <laughs> I don't eat. They do. Peregrines yeah. love them. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure. <laughs> so does Ted. <laughs> so does Ted. You ever, really? you ever bite down on the buckshot? Yeah. 
<laughs> Bob, I just wondered if you, what, what paintings you're working on right now. Oh, okay, good. I could. Uh, well, I'm not going to carry the computer around the studio. Uh, the um, I'm doing one of the two or three biggest I've ever done. It's 12 feet long wow. and four feet high. And it's the Platte River. Oh. Um, it's uh, at dawn and the, the sky, which you can't see much of, is yellow. Therefore, the, the, it's the delta of the Platte. And it's one of the great um, nature phenomena in North America or the world that you, you, you go and see the sandhill cranes. They come yeah. in there oh. by the tens oh. of thousands. Yeah. And uh, so I've got about a hundred sandhill cranes. Yeah. It's very tedious. Yeah, <laughs> sandhill cranes <laughs> over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so, but the overall effect is, is kind of striking with the, the big winding yellow slashes. Yeah. Um, and I stole the, uh, I got to not babble on and on and on, but I stole the artistic idea from Andrew Wyeth, my great hero. Mm -hmm. And he has a painting called Hoffman Slough, which is looking down just after sunset at a slashing little creek all reflecting yellow. Cool. Um, so that's, that's one of the ones I'm working on. And uh, plus I'm, uh, I, I, I'm doing uh, two granddaughters just cause, uh, well, their dad, our son Christopher asked us to do them. I'll, I'll run over and grab them. Somebody talk about something else. All right. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I have a question that might actually follow up with uh, painting related. <laughs> if there's time, <laughs> if there's time, if there's not time, that's totally cool. Quinn, you paint as well as photographs? You do? I do. Um, my roots were kind of in um, visual art. Actually, first couple of years I was submitting in to get to know with uh, paintings. And uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and now because of COVID, I've actually gotten back into sketching and painting with friends virtually. Oh, and uh, yeah, so I really enjoy it. Yeah. So explain virtually, what are you doing? Like, how is that? Um, so I have a friend right now, um, she just got accepted into OCAD and um, so she was working on her portfolio uh, for the visual arts program there and uh, I just so happened to meet her um, through the bar scene in Toronto. Uh, we both like the same kind of bands and stuff and uh, yeah we ended up uh, connecting and I was like hey like we should schedule like some painting days since you're into that and I want to get back into that because it's been a number of years and like school and all this stuff. So we've been starting to do this and I've been making nice cards and stuff for my parents. Um, and then also connecting with fellow get to know um, ambassadors like Kayla Jackson. Um, and I'm hoping to plan one with Colin sometime. Um, but uh, yeah, it just, it's, it feels, it's like a breath of fresh air therapeutically for me in this time right now. <laughs> you hang out fun. in bars to meet girls? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> I, used, I used to hang out at the museum hoping I would see one, and I never did. <laughs> no, uh, no. Got, uh, this is uh, one granddaughter. Oh, nice. And uh, that's Grace. She's more, more finished than uh, Cleo. Oh, nice. <laughs> Wasn't Grace the one that you, you didn't actually um, paint? when you did the under the tree, remember you did the four grandkids and one of them wasn't really the true grandchild. Wasn't it Grace that kind of got bumped? Yeah, I think, I think it probably was. It was yep. So I'm glad you actually have a painting of her now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, just before we wrap up here, the question I wanted to ask is a question I've always wanted to ask Robert Bateman. Um, <laughs> we, so, as I was just explaining, I love visual art. It's a huge part of my life um, and I'm trying to get back into it. For years and years and years and years, I've been trying to master feathers and fur like you have, sir, and I have failed miserably at it. 
I was wondering if you could maybe share a little tip or trick there in terms of structure and form. I don't know how you do it. Like I actually have no idea how you do it. And it blows my mind when I see your paintings. Well, I think in, in terms of, particularly with fur, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not after every hair. It's easy to get a small block brush and get bogged down just doing all those hairs. Right. So I, I try to treat the sections. Um, say it's a, a, a cottontail rabbit or whatever. I try to show where the shoulder bones come up, where the abdomen is and how that goes around. And, tr and so I'm after the big hunks and big forms. Right. And then I do the particularity more uh, toward the end and have some little highlights, some little splits in the fur. Uh, feathers is a different story. And of course that depends. Owls, uh, as Gord knows, um, owls like great grays are totally different from eagles um, in the form and quality of the feathers. Right. But the main thing is, uh, there's a, an old saying, uh, you can't see the woods for the trees. Mm. Uh, but I'm after the woods. The, the form of the land under the woods and the type of trees and not try to get bogged down with all the little trees and all the little leaves. Right. But right. that was. <laughs> no, that's okay. Does that come from like a study of body and shape or does that like studying, analyzing photographs? It, um, uh, it pro probably before I knew I was, I always knew I loved wildlife and I was, a serious wildlife artist when I was 12. And when I was 18, a friend of mine who was a year or two older, he was at the College of Art. He said, um, first of all, wildlife, you can't, wildlife is not a suitable subject. And, <laughs> and, you, um, and, and you shouldn't uh, do detail. Detail was um, a no-no. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I bought it and I became an ab more of an abstract artist and of course a group of seven and then finally ending up with abstract expressionist just big bold things and then um all, all of you have heard this before i went to a andrew wyeth show at the albright knox gallery in buffalo and it was uh if you know your bible it was my road to damascus like saint paul falling off his horse <coughs> i fell off my abstract horse in one night and it uh, took me almost a year to get rid of my abstract snobbery and to go into the particularity of the natural world. Wow, unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you for answering that. That's a question yeah. I've always yeah. wanted to ask you. You take a risk when you ask me a question, you get a lecture. Sorry, Barry. Jack, Jack, we're we're almost up. out of time here. Jack does have one quick question. Did you want to? Did you yeah, want to Robert, Robert, um, the uh, artwork that you saw um, that we're building with this beacon of hope in Kelowna, uh, which will have near field communication to help people who are suffering in one way or another and direct them to resources. Um, it, so there, it, there's, there's a lot of study around the, the, the amazing creativity of the light that this artist creates inside this glass. Hmm. But there's also a certain sound um, megahertz that actually heal us or put us to peace a bit. So what I'm thinking is this, we're directing this in Kelowna to a social kind of thing and we see them around the world. But I'm also thinking, is there something in a totem pole that we could learn more about the sounds of nature and get to know those names of those birds and their sound? I'm, I'm thinking there's a piece in the making that when it's in a park setting in a in a community, as people come to it, um, seeking peace in their own life, seeking it in their marriage, in their family, in their business, in their community. Is there something else we could figure out that might bring us in more close, like obviously nature is the number one, but somehow we're, as Mary's using technology, somehow maybe there's technology to maybe address this too, this sort of totem pole, that, that makes us remember the importance of nature. I, 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 I know that's a big question. Yeah, especially at 159. <laughs> 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 so we do need to make it a wrap, yeah. 
Yeah, I um, I really admire the the uh, I consider the the best art of of um, sort of pre-contact culture is done here on the West Coast, the Haida and the Kwagyutl and uh, Simchen and so on. They they did just superb, powerful pieces. Um, and their positives and, and negatives and so on. But that's, they symbolize different things and, and I like to admire it, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna be influenced by it. Yeah. Okay, no, no, I just wanted to put that out there. And as we move forward with hope, I think the most important thing we need is for our, my children and grandchildren is a sense of hope. You know, I mean, peace is a slippery slope, but hope is really important on there. So we move, we move, we continue to move in Rotary to build that hope of the future. Yeah, that we can and one of the things, I don't know whether this comes from the Bible or not, but uh, finding yourself by losing yourself, losing yourself yeah. in the lives of others. In the lives of other human beings who perhaps need <clears throat> can do with some help and some attention and lives of uh, things that don't give a damn about us such as the birds and mammals and <clears throat> reptiles yeah. and humans around yeah. it uh, helping yeah. those things in a totally selfless way um mm -hmm. i th i really do think uh, uh, people like albert schweitzer would be probably one of the greatest human beings who ever lived giving your life to something, some other, li uh, other lives <clears throat> is yeah. the best thing for your own sense of well-being and hope. Fine, fine, words, to, fine words to end on, I think, uh, uh, Bob and Jack. And I'll, 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 I'll uh, I, again, I'll thank you for hanging in there for the whole call there, uh, Bob. We didn't, uh, we didn't know we'd get a chance to get you for two full hours, but it, uh, two full hours have gone by in a, in a great hurry here. I did have a bathroom. I had a bathroom break. Okay. <laughs> Full disclosure. You're allowed that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, again, thanks to everyone, and I'm going to give uh, uh, our. Uh, uh, I have to. I have to give the the floor over to Mary to say uh, so long to everybody. And uh, again, I thank you. And uh, Mary, you go ahead and take us home. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. You're all, all amazing. That's all I have to say. And thank you. And I hope we can continue some connections moving forward, Gord. We'll have to talk about that. But I've been getting some chats. People would like to do something more. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But I hope this can really support all the wonderful work, Bob, that the Bateman Foundation is doing. And, you know, we want to just continue moving the our joint agenda forward in whatever way we can right Gord? right we'll do it maybe maybe next year we can do some hugs yeah yeah that would be, be nice that would be, <laughs> that would be nice <laughs> bye everybody thank you Take care. Yeah, thank you, you. great bye. job everybody happy bye. birthday mary happy, happy birthday, birthday mary. Yeah. happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, my birthday to see you, mary jo. happy birthday mary yeah, thanks. Happy birthday. Thanks, for Thanks. Thanks. Good job, Gord. Many Bye, happy returns. Good. Thank good. you, Bob. Good, good, good. Yeah, I like the many happy returns. Means you're going to have more of them. Many. Exactly. <laughs>